24 years old. And uh, as we have been saying, she is at this stage unbeatable. Current ranking number one. And she, uh, she at one point held that ranking right there, number one, for 186 weeks, which is longer than any man or woman has ever been able to accomplish that feat. And the last time Steffi lost a match was uh, in early November against Conchita Martinez, the Virginia Slims of Philadelphia, which came just five weeks after she had foot surgery, which really hampered her through most of last year. And one of the reasons why she's dominated this year is she's been 100% healthy. She's very motivated, very happy person. She's uh, extremely fit. She's always been fit, but she's taken that to another level. This young lady really enjoys playing. Sorry, Pam <laughs> Tennis, doesn't she? I, as I said, I, it's been so much fun to watch her enjoy. Now, we have seen matches when this 22-year-old from Minsk in Belarus has not really had a lot of fun on the court. But this week, she and she's talking about the fact that she really likes to play. You can see right now she holds the highest rank she's had in the last five years. At one point, 1988, when she did get to the finals of the French Open and was absolutely trounced by her opponent today in 32 minutes, uh, she did achieve a ranking as high as five in the world and, and uh, she has won a, only two tournament titles in, the, in this past period, but she, she has won a third tournament earlier this year in Chicago. So she is proving that uh, her singles game is starting to come around again, and it's just really wonderful to see because she's just so you know, wildly talented and, and uh, can do so much on the tennis court. First point. Bichanda Rubin, young American player in the final of the Virginia Slims in Chicago. That's always a real barometer of Steffi Graf's play, that forehand, and whether or not she makes a lot of errors uh, is going to be something that Zvereva will be hoping for. <laughs> As everybody does when they play Steffi, but uh, she builds her game around that. Everybody um, in, in, in tennis, uh, in women's tennis, gets remembered for something. And you know, the, the Steffi Graf forehand is probably the most feared shot ever in tennis, I, I feel like. To be a champion, you need something that intimidates. 15 all, first game. Well, Steffi Groff has really only had one tough set in this tournament. That was the last set she played against Lindsay Davenport. Davenport had the two set points, as Betsy mentioned in the opening. Other than that, it was clear sailing. She beat Kamiko Date, who's top 10 player from Japan, the first one ever, 6-1, 6-1 in the quarterfinals. Close to losing a set to Lindsay Davenport, who is part of the USTA player development program that headquarters here in this stadium. They just moved in. Graf holds on. One game to love. Steffi Graf, no surprise. Best of three sets. Spareva to serve after this. That's great. I saw her on the screen and I just started to, just, I wouldn't get it. She's such a character. She just makes me laugh when I see her. <laughs> I hope she gets into it because the yeah. crowd, yeah. Uh, she can just put on such a show yeah. when she really gets mm -hmm. going. Oh, I hope so too. I mean, uh, but so is that two unforced errors in that game? From yeah, yeah. I mean, she could she could then start to you know get the crowd involved. Uh -huh. and, for two reasons. One, because it's a good match, but two, because it brings that extra bit of dimension, mm -hmm. the character and the mm -hmm. personality. <clears throat> two points I'd like to make at some point is um, picking tendencies. I mean, with Groff, you've got to know some of her patterns in order to stay out there and feel comfortable. I mean, you've got to know that when she runs into the backhand corner, she likes to go a certain way. Not all the time, but and she likes on big serves to go certain ways. Oh dear. Oh, We're wow. going to miss a couple of first two points. 
Betsy, what's your, your double? Well, that's why I didn't. Okay, jerk. Jerk. You don't, you don't want to know. On my talk back. We'd seen that. Second games forever serving, fifteen love. Of course, had a little, little tougher time, but she got to uh, the final stage here without dropping a set. In the quarterfinals, she upset the number four seed, Jana Novotna, in two tie breaks. And then, of course, it was Brenda Schultz who upset the two-time defending champion, Arantxa Sanchez Vicario, and uh, she handled her good friend, Brenda Schultz, very comfortably. Well, that's two times now in this game that Natasha Zvereva has come to the net in the first point, and then on that last point, she's up 40 love. It's always such a help to get that first service game under your belt against the number one player. And she's doing it positively. I mean, she's, uh, she's coming in, she's willing to take some risks, and she said, she needs desperate measures. Her, her record against Graf is not good, and she really needs to be positive and aggressive. 40-15, Pam, uh, after Zvereva won the U.S. Open doubles with you, she said that was one of her most important victories. She's only got better since then, hasn't she? She's won, what, seven now she's doubles a, titles. She's actually won more Grand Slam titles in the last two years than <laughs> Steffi Graf. <laughs> and believe me, doubles counts. <laughs> So it's forever holds on and it's one game all in the first set. She has also won a one mixed doubles. That was the Australian Open with Jimmy Pugh. Actually, uh, Zvereva and Gigi Fernandez, Pam, are actually starting to just pose a, a career that is getting not even close to what you and Martina enjoyed, but uh, they're the closest that uh, have come to you. You guys won 109 consecutive titles at one point. And, well, matches. I wish it was uh, titles. I mean, matches. <laughs> the title would have been good. <laughs> that would have been excellent. Forever has never won a match against Effie Graf, and they have played a whole number of times, as you can see. Only two sets. French championships in 88 was a disaster for Svereva. But things are already looking better today. 15 all. Those two sets that uh, Svereva was able to win were, were on clay, where this powerful shot right here, this, this huge forehand, uh, you know, gets a little neutralized on the slower clay. On a faster court, it's, it's, it's just much deadlier. 15.30. And that's the serve Steffi Groff likes to hit most, and she does it better than most any woman righty, is she goes out wide to the ad court very well, and that's going to be tough for Natasha with her two-hander. Point rough. Zvereva is from Belarus, country of a population of just about ten million people. 
became independent in 91. Of course, it was part of the old Soviet Union. That's too good. When, when you do come in, decide you're going to come in against Groff, you really have to come in on something very, very good and uh, really mean it because this is what she's so good at. She's so quick with her feet that she can get around. That ball was pretty close to the sideline, and she was still able to, to hit a winning forehand. Sailed that one just long. She is not playing badly so far. Two games to one. Graf of Germany leads. So already she's four on four stairs to two winners, which is. I don't see her at the moment, but. Do you know where the... Hmm. Me. All right. Down and... Okay, away from my nose. I don't, do you know where Gigi's been sitting? Mm -mm. She, they play doubles later today, so she may choose not to be in the sun. It's pretty warm. Or come out for a little while. Graf hits the first forehand long of that point, and it's 15 love. Zvereva, two games to one Graf. And that's five times now Zvereva's come to net, only lost one of those points. Good play again, uh, just really sticking with her aggressive plan. And uh, it's, it's great to see. This was her plan the last time they played the Virginia Slims of, um, championships in New York and of course it's on an indoor court it's much faster and it did not work very well for her and that's because Steffi Graf was just so on that day the guys in the locker room kid Heinz Gundhardt about uh, Steffi Graf and he said to me yesterday the only thing that I have to worry about with Steffi Graf is that she should not get bored out there because she has not lost a set in so long. She's not the type to get bored as she's so self-motivated and disciplined and such a perfectionist that she just keeps wanting to improve her game. Peter Groff also enjoys coming down here to the South Florida sun. That is Steffi's father. Just behind uh, Heinz Gunthardt. Well, the backhand pass is not working so far. That's three or four she's missed. And uh, But earlier in the game, Steffi Groff took a 30-love point second serve and came in behind the second serve. And that's something that she wouldn't do a couple of years ago when she was losing to Sabatini all those times. So she's starting to show a little more variety in her game, which probably is a reason why she keeps a little motivated. Game point. That's a good, good court coverage, and then well played by Svereva, and we are even two games all in the first set.
And what a big game for Natalia to win, too, because it's not easy to hold a couple times in a row against uh, Groff. And this was a, you know, she really, she handcuffed Groff. She didn't really know which way to go because she can hold this ball and uh, she can go either way as well. You just get a little glimpse of some of the fun she has out there. Love 15, you, uh, in fact, both of you were saying that you hope that we see some of the fun side of her because she is a fun person. She enjoys playing and, and she's, you know, one of the, the fun lovers of the women's tour, isn't she? Certainly, as she and Gigi certainly uh, have a lot of character and doubles on the court. Missed it. But she's pressing and she is forcing Groff, you know, into making some errors because she's consistently keeping some pressure on. has taken care of Lindsay Davenport a couple of times this year, but you're going to be seeing a lot of this young lady, player development program protege. She did well at the Australian quarterfinals against Groff and here semifinalist against Groff. Good year. And what a great job too she did in the semifinals. She was absolutely blown away in that first set, six love, and hung in there and uh, actually broke Steffi, had two set points, and was just not able to convert them. Well, Zvereva had an opening here. It was love 30, and she had two second serves and made one return, but it was pretty much a shot that Groff could take a hold of with a forehand, missed that last one. Those are the opportunities you need to capitalize if you're going to threaten Groff. that one so here is a break point for Svereva again she's you know it's in Graf's mind that Svereva can move well enough to track down all these balls and uh, it's putting some pressure on Graf to have to come up with something a little too good maybe a little too soon the sun is in Graf's eyes too serving from that side at this time of the day just short of 1:30 in the afternoon on the east coast the break is served and would you believe it it goes to Natalia Svereva of Belarus we'll be back with more from the Lipton Championships after this word from our local stations is that one break point so far are they still hearing me breathe I've been four hands. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that's the side that's that breaks what I down said. in, uh, yes. you know, in big moments. I yeah. mean, last year here against Sanchez. 40, uh, yeah. What's her first? Didn't last year here she make 49 on four stairs on the forehand side alone? Is that possible? It was some outrageous number. Yep. Yeah. Oh boy, we're gonna miss a couple points probably here. <coughs> oh yeah. <laughs> well, first point of every service game so far, she's found her way to net. All two. Point of the match. Mm 
Just another 50. <laughs> Fifteen loves for Rava. Three games to twos for Rava. She's taking on Steffi Graf. Score alone at this stage is a surprise. Yeah, yeah. Rava off to a very good start. Thirty love. And that's Graf's seventh forehand error, unforced error, and that, and that is always said as we said at the top a barometer for Graf's game. And right now that's a disaster for her. Yeah, and a lot of times in really critical, you know. Big occasions, that's the side that has gone astray. I mean, it's deserted her. Last year here in the final, uh, 49 on forced errors, some, some huge number of forehand errors against Sanchez Vicario. <laughs> Graf's only been broken four times now this whole week. She was broken three times coming into this final. She likes to have pace on her forehand, and the second serve of Zvereva gets up, and it's got quite a lot of spin. She's yeah. not as happy with that. Exactly what you were saying. I mean, if you can keep that ball out of her oh. striking zone. Game points for Eva. Vareva was a terrific junior player. She won a couple of doubles titles, the French and Wimbledon junior doubles, in 1987 with Andre Medvedev's sister. Forty thirty. And these are the danger games because she was up forty love, and now it's forty thirty. And you always get a little nervous when you've lost a couple of game points. You've had a big lead. As we look here at the replay, and Groff is just able to nail that forehand. This is a huge point now. She doesn't want to get it back to Deuce after having three game points for a 4-2 lead. Oh. She, as you say, Pam, she would really like to hold on to the service game. Then she, you know, to hold three times in a row, that would defy the law of averages of, of the people that Steffi Graf plays. Well, she really hasn't done anything from, from 40 love up. I mean, Groff's totally dictated the last three points, so she's got to come up with a big, big play here. Deuce. It's three in this game alone, and that second serve that she's missed. Yeah, I mean, it's a 74-mile-an-hour serve, and so there's not a lot of pace on it. And as you say, it gets up there, and it's un an uncomfortable shot for Graf. Ten unforced errors for Steffi Graf, and uh, eight have been on the forehand side. Actually, nine have been off the forehand side. She's only made one backhand error. Make that two. Push that one, so Svereva holds on, and she has a four-game to two lead. She had a pretty good year last year when the Grand Slams got to the quarterfinals at Wimbledon and at the U.S. Open. We've talked about 88 when she got to the, the final of the French Championships and lost badly to Graf, but she had a great match with Navratilova in that tournament. Yes, yeah, she also beat uh, Martina in a tournament in Filderstadt and uh, got to the finals and lost to Mary Pierce. But, you know, she, she likes to play the serving volleyers because uh, she's, you know, she has all these off-pace shots and good angles, and it's actually a nightmare for a serving volleyer to play against Sereva. You and I both found that out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I found it out not too long ago. Pam still ranked number 50 in singles and in the top 10 in the world in doubles. That's what I said, doubles counts. <laughs> the one Steffi likes to hit when she steps around into the backhand corner she likes to go off with the forehand and in order to really you got to try and pick that sometimes you can't stand in the middle of the court because Groff's too good you've got to pick a side that inside out forehand is the same one that gave Andre Agassi so much trouble with his wrist and he had wrist surgery in December. He's back. He would take on Pete Sampras in our final match tomorrow here in the men's singles. And that'll be a good one. 40 love, Graf. That's, that's something that, that Graf likes and needs. I mean, she, she gets an awful lot of cheap points from her serve.
<laughs> that's a great shot. Good reflex action from both players. And that's where you see her doubles come in. I mean, she gets exactly. those kind of points all the time in doubles, and she does it so well. She keeps it down low. Look at Groff. She's a great approach here, but look at the two-hander being whipped right down very low. Obviously, it's, the neck cord makes it awkward. And the lob. Zvereva's got a wonderful lob. Really, does anybody have better hands than Zvereva in the game? Not many, if any. Yeah. You're right. So Groff holds on, but she is a break of serve down. Svereva ahead 4-3. She's going to serve. This is live coverage of the women's singles final at the Lipton. How many forehand errors now? Nine still. Traveling with a laptop now, starting first of the year. I was totally, I had never, I got an Apple PowerBook. It's good fun. Out wide. Yeah. Yep. How many is that? Oh, they're there, yeah. Oh. Vareva is serving. 15 loves Vareva, and she leads in this match four games to three. First set, it's a best of three set women's singles final. Today's overhead shots, courtesy of this good looking machine, it's the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes, Pompano Beach, Florida. Controls today, Jim Maloney. Boy, it's a beautiful day to be up there, too. 15 all. Missed it. One thing that Zverev has done very well so far in this match is she's made sure she's won the first point on all four of her service games, including this game. It's just such, such a nice thing to be a 15 love every service game. And she did what you thought was a good idea too, Pam. She served the first point she served an ace out wide just to let Steffi know she's not afraid to go out to that forehand. It's really important because, you know, Steffi likes to cheat over a little bit so she can hit the forehands. It's good to go out wide. No, excuse me, it is 30 all. It was really the first backhand pass that she hauled off on and it hit very effectively. She's coming over the backhand side more now than she has in the last couple of years, hasn't she? Remember when she won the Grand Slam, I thought she was hitting a lot more tops from the back, and then she kind of lost it a little bit. Now she's getting it back. Yeah, it's certainly something she's worked an awful lot on and just hasn't felt that comfortable using it in matches, but uh, it's paying, you know, all that work is paying off for her now. Wondering about a call there, but she didn't get one. And there was that loopy one. Zvereva did a great job because Steffi really penetrated Zvereva's backhand, but she was able to loop it high into the corner. This, the, this match so far reminds me a lot of the way Sabatini could play Groff. I mean, Sabatini has good defensive skills. So does Zvereva. She can stay in this match with her from the ground. Main point. Yes. Miss that, so it's deuce. Yeah, and then she can attack and do it really well. 
As Steffi goes to towel off, it is the hottest, most humid day so far of these championships. And there was a point for five threes, Vereva. So you don't want to make easy errors as she did with that backhand on the big points. Deuce. Question for you too. Why is Steffi Graf not attacking the second serve more vehemently? Because she's looking at a 60, you know, a under 70 mile an hour second serve every time, and she's she's just not making Svereva pay the price today. Well, it's not in her instincts. We saw her do it once earlier in the match, but that's been it. But that one time she did it, she won the point. Yeah, she really needs to step up and, and catch it, be, you know, a little bit lower, so it's in her power zone. Five games to three, first set. Well, she's held serve four straight times now, and that is just, you know, as we said, that is the key in this match. So few people can hold their serve against Groff because her return game is so big. And she's, you know, she's just so aggressive. The first strike of every ball uh, against Groff is uh, a dominating stroke. It dictates the play. Vareva's worked her way in a position to win this first set. She has won two sets before from Steffi Groff, both in tie breaks. As we look at the replay, Groff, there it is, hitting that forehand that she loves, stepping around into the backhand corner, opens it up for the backhand here. Got it. I would not say that uh, Zvareva is showing much nerve. She is just swinging away. You know, you, you kind of got the feeling how comfortable and how at ease she was feeling and how good within herself. And, and it's just proof out here. She's, she's playing so loosely. That's, that's hard to do in this situation. Remember how many big matches she's played in the last two years, center court, huge occasions, and doubles. And that helps. Does help, yeah. Fails wide, 30-15. You know, it's just so nice to see, too, because women's tennis could certainly use a, a, a new face. And uh, this player right here in your screen is so capable of moving up into that part of women's tennis, in that upper echelon. Game point. Oh! A lot of unforced errors of the forehand from Graf, especially. That one is nothing wrong with that one, and she holds on. Groff is trailing 5 4. Can I, um, may I ask you? Thank you. Um, when, uh, I think we need to address. When you think Celis is coming back, women's final? Not in this next game, though, when yeah, she's not, serving not for the... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but during, right, but during... Maybe early in the second. Okay. Yeah, sure. and we can talk about women's okay. tennis, blah, blah, blah. How many straight sets is it? 20... Oh, straight sets. sets. How yeah. many sets uh, in a row? I wrote that how down many, somewhere. How many sets in a row didn't we... Uh, 54, 54, yeah. so it's in a little <laughs> danger here, is uh, we can sort of <laughs> see if she can... 
win the first game, first point on her service game again, 54 straight. But she's, I've seen both times where she had set points. Arantxa had set points in Virginia Sims of Florida, and then Lindsay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. What was DiMaggio's hitting streak? 56? Okay. <laughs> let, me, let me just say, you know, the real oh, challenge yeah. is, can she hold four straight times in a row, uh, which no one's ever done, and then you can say, can, can she win her That's first no set? That's one of my favorite this things. In this tournament. In, yeah, in this tournament, yeah. Spereva serving for the set, leading five games to four. Championship match in the women's singles of the Lipton. Well, that's that's the first time she's lost the first point on serve, and you know she's trying to do something right now that nobody's been able to do this week here at Lipton, and that's hold serve five times in a row. Lindsay Davenport was the first to be able to hold four times. And, uh, of course, Steffi Groff has won 54 straight sets. Forehand error again. That's 12 now for this match. And as you two have said, as goes her forehand, so goes her game. He hasn't faced a break point yet. Fifteen all. And Zvereva is serving up the tough end. The sun is very much in her eyes right now. Well, that's, I think that's a sign of nerves. I mean, she's feeling some pressure. She, you know, <laughs> she doesn't think about streaks, but here she is very close to losing her first set. Except the forehand's been off the entire set, and I would have thought at some point in the set she would have settled down and hit it better. But she, I think it's confidence. When she knows it's off, she has trouble getting it back. He's the third player in this streak that'll have set points. <laughs> Sanchez Vicario, two weeks ago in the Virginia Slims of Florida, had two set points at 5-4 in the second set of their final, and then Lindsay Davenport the other day. Two more right here. Either one of them converted. 40 15. Oh. <laughs> Roth saves one. Well, one of the reasons why people have trouble converting is Steffi does have this tendency to pick up the pick up the pace. They don't make big errors on the big points. I mean, she can lift the level of her game. I mean, she can pick it up a notch. Oh, it's cold wide. Oh, I think Steffi actually thought that was in. Now, obviously, Natalia did. And she went for it. I mean, she, that was not, this is not a tentative shot here. Let's see if we can just see how close it lands. It, it, uh, oh. <laughs> you can't overrule it, that's for sure. Yeah. Once the linesman makes that call, it's too close to overrule. But in order to have a streak of 54 straight, you need to have a bit of luck. Yep. Deuce. Oh, oh good comeback after a couple of... Especially that call that she thought might have gone her way comes right into the net, puts the volley away, and she has another set point. Collective sigh from this well, crowd. And the only one, uh, the only double fault today. You know, the sun does have some play in that double fault, but uh, there might be there might be a little nerves in that double fault as well.
her fourth set point. And the eighth one in this streak. And the crowd. <laughs> well, they'd love, they'd love to see someone, you know, really pose a threat, really, you know, push Groff. Well, that time she decided to hit her second serve first. That was only a 72 mile an hour first serve, which was smart after the double fall on the last set point, but uh, it was right at the forehand and she wasn't really set up for the next shot. Steers that one long and there is a set point number five. And Natasha's doing something smart here. She's taking her time. Just what I was thinking. Trying to collect herself. Find the solution to winning the big point. And she needs to step up to this line right now and have a definite serve in mind. Do not waver. Oh! She was going to serve in volley, which was, I think, a very positive move. Instead of Steffi Grasso, the streak <laughs> is over. And there's a standing ovation <laughs> forming in this brand new stadium. <laughs> and Graf says, OK, OK, I lost my first set. Well, streaks are meant to be broken, and, and no one deserves to win 55 straight <laughs> sets on the WTA <laughs> Tour. <laughs> Nobody. So it's over. I'm sure she'll be wanting to start a new streak. She's going for one. <laughs> this crowd is into this and Groff doesn't enjoy this too much. She just wants to get on with it. Well, Steffi's ready to play, but once, you, once again, Natasha needs to catch her breath first off. <laughs> She's taking her time. Oh! First set that Groff has lost in 28 matches. Is this match is Steffi's to win or to lose? I mean, she's, uh, you know, she's made more on forced errors than, than than normal. Normally, she has a lot, but she's got more winners, and that's not the case so far. The other thing Natasha has to realize is that the match isn't over. I mean, she's she's had a great victory, winning one set, but come on, she's got to try and put together two great sets in this match. So she's apt to have a little bit of a lull, but she's got to get her act back together. It's love, 40 love. Yeah, the hope uh, for her is that she doesn't just say, okay, well, I got to say, boy, that's great. I did well. Now <laughs> let's uh, get out of here because that could and does happen. Game point. But you know what, she's playing a smart match today and she's hitting the ball solidly and well. And this is the way she was trying to play uh, the very last time they played. And I mean, it, it worked, it worked okay, but you know, the court speed was just too quick. And uh, you know, she said, well, it worked well for me. Love is too short, Graf puts it away. Graf with a one game to love lead in the second set. But Svereva has won the first set. Brian, you were right about a great day. Yeah, way to go, Brian. Should be. <laughs> well, I haven't heard it all week. Okay. 
her. Can you break point his rate ahead against her? None. And right, okay. She said how many one none or one? And where's Brad? Zero. And one for one over here. So it's only been okay. The whole match is only been one. Yeah. Yep. So just one break. And and Zarevis held now five times. Huh? But still won the game. Yeah. Wides. Yeah. Zvereva serving, trailing one game to love. Help! Missed the forehand Here's again. <laughs> it's going to be so frustrating. <laughs> 15 love. Dade County now has the Marlins and the Heat and the Panthers and the Dolphins. The Marlins going into their second year. The Panthers making their debut. So the reason to move down to South, it's becoming a sports mecca this now. They've got a, a great golf event here and uh, on Keepers Canes, matter of fact, and now the Lipton Championships. 15 all. Second ace. 30-15. Both times out wide. 82 miles an hour. Of course, you have to take some pace off that, that wide serve because you're trying to drop it short, get a lot of angle, take your opponent way out of court. Also, the machine that reads the speed is straight down the center of the court, so when you do serve out wide, it doesn't register as fast anyway. The other, th the other thing that uh, Zvareva is doing so well today is uh, mixing up her serve, not only the direction of her serve, but how often she comes in behind it. You know, she serves and stays back, she serves and comes in, and uh, that, that puts a little thought in Graf's mind on the return. Hey! Missed it. The slice, it wasn't a great approach, but what it was, it, it wasn't a lot of pace, and it was into the court, so Steffi had to move inside the baseline, and she's never been happy in that part of the court. Second double fault and that one was not even close. First double fault was on a set point, her first set point I think it was. It was a third set point yeah. she did serve a double on. Still game point, Svereva. It, so Svereva holds on and it's one game all in the second set. She won the first six games to four. Coming up next year on ABC, the professional okay. bowlers roll in with the Long Island Open. Then ABC's wide world of sports follows as Christy Yamaguchi headlines the latest competition from the Dura Soft Colors World Challenge of Champions. Plus Olympic gold medalist Tommy Moe in World Cup downhill skiing. All today on ABC Sports. Graf serving, one game more. Oh! <laughs> well, Graf's just 
hating this match right now. Because no ball is true. When it comes off Zverev's racket, it's got some <laughs> queer spin on it. I mean, the slice approach that won her the last game was, was side spin and yeah. slice and crazy, and Grok yeah. hates it. Nothing is clean. Everything's got a different action. Tough to get into a rhythm, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. And, and she's so composed and uh, thinking so well, which says, you know, to our minds, I, you know, we up here really believe she, you know, she thinks she can win this match. And she's come in with a clear game plan. Well, you know, obviously the telling stages will be when she does get into uh, a position to actually win it. That's a little ways away. And hopefully she will not be able to, you know, project her, her, her mind into the future and just really stay point by point. First set is all about uh, the, the forehand on forced errors from Steffi Groff. Both players are getting in about the same amount of serves. But you know the, the amazing thing is Zvereva did not face a break point at all in her set, and she held serve five times to win the set. 15 forehand on forced errors from Groff. Dirty all here. Now game point four here. She'd like. She'd like to hit a lot more of those, wouldn't she? She'd like to, get, she'd like to start kind of balancing out that uh, forehand winner, forehand on forced error. She needs some more forehand winners. They've played 13 times before, and Groff has won every one. Oh! Losing only two sets. Both in tie breaks. This is the first time Zareva won a set from Groff without going to a tie break. <laughs> and both on clay, too, which would favor Zareva. Missed that one, so Groff holds on. She's got a two game to one lead. No breaks to serve in the second set yet. As a matter of fact, Svereva has not been broken yet. We'll be back with more from the Lipton Championships after this word from our local stations. One hour done. Yes. Go to the toilet, <laughs> take a shower, grab a meal. Are we going to have to edit some of this match since it's going to take uh, longer than our allotted time? No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll cut into bowling. Yeah. No, it's not going to. It's going to be over mm -hmm. anyway. Okay. I mean, it's going to take well. a 20 minute set here and then 25 minutes. It's perfect. I think Ross poised to go on a mini run here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, not that kind of run. Oh, I think she'll come back in the third and play all right. <laughs> Your day's complete and a success. Leo, winners on the forehand versus errors on the forehand? Okay. Okay. What's this, that hundred there? 18. Oh, oh, second. Are okay. we up to 18 unforced forehand errors? And how many forehand winners? Nine. 18 to nine. Wow, okay. <coughs> That's a forced error, though. That one, I would hope. You, know, you never know with the doc. I mean, he cooks the books. Yeah. <laughs> Bereva, 15 love. She is serving to Steffi Graf. She won the first set. She's down 2 1. Second set. <laughs> Hasn't been a good day on the forehand side for Graf, and that's what has caused her problems. Yeah, and this is really the story of the match. I mean, twice as many errors. Uh, off the forehand and winners, and that's not a good match for Steffi Graf. She normally has a few more unforced errors than winners, but the forehand winner column is usually very close to the unforced error column. Oh. 
just Four. missed. That's, and that's because Steffi Graf goes for her forehand. Uh, so she's going to make a lot of unforced errors, but she also normally hits a lot of winners. So she's really not playing a very good match right now. As we see Donna Ring from Sydney, Australia, travels the tour. She's a silver medal ITF umpire. They have bronze, silver, and gold. So she's working her way for a gold. It takes a lot of time to get the gold. There's only two women umpires, and it just takes a lot of evaluations and a lot of big matches. You sort of get the feeling that Steffi uh, will really kind of clean up after some of us, her, from her first set where she made, it was kind of sloppy, made a lot of unforced errors, and, and that aggravates her, and I really, you really get the feeling she'll try to straighten up. 30 old. Yeah. She, uh, Steffi Graf finished her match with Davenport in the second set, also making a lot of unforced errors. And, uh, you know, we really felt she'd come out here today and uh, do the opposite. Break point here. First one against Vareva today. And she's having trouble with her first serve into this ad court. She's got to straighten this out and get more first serves in. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Big backhand for Clean Winner. You have to believe that Groff thought she's gone, tried to go to the forehand side so many times. This time I'm going to go to the backhand, but look at it. She picked it up. And this is a sitting duck. It's a 56 mile an hour second right. serve. It's one mile over the speed limit, but uh, Groff would <laughs> like to just, she thinks she can hit it for a winner, but she can't, so she's annoyed. Point for Graf. I'm trying to remember if she has hit a forehand winner off the second serve. I, <laughs> at the top of my head, I don't remember it, and usually you see a lot of that from her. Break point. Ooh, steers that one into the net, and Steffi Graf has the break in the second set. Three games to one. That's really the first mistake that uh, Zvereva has made for real no reason. Uh, it, was a, it was a shot that she has been routinely making, certainly throughout this first set. Well, it was a shame. It was really her best first serve of the whole game. She had a beautiful one out wide. And, just and her favorite shot, too, the, right. the two-handed backhand. Yeah. And Skundhardt is Steffi Graf's coach, and he's breathing a little easier now. Up a break. Well, <laughs> that's what we talk about with Svereva. I mean, she just has rubber bands for arms. They kind of stretch out when she needs them to. And I mean, this stab volley is just, I mean, to be able to control this, first of all, how does she get there? Split steps, and she just stabs at the ball in just such good hands and such a long reach. Boy, she does that a lot. Reminder, she's one half of the best doubles team in the world, and that helps when you get to the net. The other half. Gigi Fernandez. That's yeah. right, Gigi. She and Martina won some Grand Slam titles in 1990. And after this singles final, Zvereva and Fernandez will play their semifinal of the doubles against Renee Stubbs and Laurie McNeil. I asked uh, uh, Zvereva the other day about that. It, was it nice to have a doubles match in between, you know, your semifinal and your final? And she says, yes, it's wonderful. I, you know, it's kind of a distraction. I get to think about my doubles match and not think about the final. Unlike in 1988 when she, did, when she reached the final, uh, her only Grand Slam final at the French Open. She had a whole day to think about it. She said she sat around her room all day and just, you know, couldn't get the thought off of her mind. She was a nervous wreck out there. Good. 
That was the same year in 88 that Steffi Groff won the Grand Slam. In fact, the Golden Slam because she won a gold medal at the Olympics as well. She very nearly won the same thing in 89, except Sanchez Vicario beat her in the French Open final in that same court. But she won every other Grand Slam that year, and it, it has never been done before, back-to-back -back Grand Slams. It's also that same year, 88, is the last time she's been able to win this title right here at the Lipton. 30 all. That was a big opportunity for, for Zverevo. It was 15 30, second serve, having just lost her first service game, down 3 1 in this set. So now it's 30 all, but it would have been great to be up 15 40. a break point opportunity. And this is kind of what you were just talking about, Cliff. I mean, 1988 were really great years for both both of these two players. It certainly was Zareva's best singles year. That was the year she achieved her number five ranking. It's the year that uh, Graf achieved her Golden Grand Slam. Second serve, break point. She's down a break, Zareva. She came over that backhand like she has done so successfully all year for the pass. Did everything right because she made Steffi hit a couple of big backhands on break point. Remember, this was a break point to get back even in this set with serve. This one goes up the line. Zavreva makes her hit a. There were two in a row that she had to hit. This is the side she likes. This two-handed backhand of hers is just so good. And, and, and here's the fun side of <laughs> Zvereva. <laughs> Colorful, entertaining. She loves to dance. I mean, any <laughs> player party where there's a decent band, she's what I think making a fool of herself, but she has a great time. Back to Deuce. She won 100 bucks off me one time at a disco in uh, Stuttgart, Germany, because she went up on a single podium and danced in the middle of this crowded nightclub for 10 minutes. And I don't mean just like a conservative dance. I mean, so I lost 100, but it was worth it. Deuce. She has a great sense of humor. Clip the line. Oof. Zverevit would have liked to have uh, gotten out call on that one. It was very close, but this is game point now for Graf. Sometimes on the hard court, you can actually look and see a mark. And she didn't really question that too much. She may have seen it just clipping the line. Oh. That would have been a reasonable <laughs> return. Chances, didn't she? But was unable to convert. Graf, 4 1, second set. Graf played really well on both of them. Yeah, she did. Opportunity. That's wrong. It's got to go. It hasn't gotten this last game up there yet. Right. Okay. Right. Oh, that's second set. I'm sorry. Okay. I got to get used to this call. Correct. Okay. I, I wanted my seller's okay. question was on my list. I'm going to do that early in this game. So I'm sorry. We, I missed that. What, what are we going to do? Seller's question. 
Okay, okay, okay. Okay. But you don't want us discussing through points or anything? No. Is it Susan Lucci? Thank you. No. <laughs> Thankfully. When are we going to do the promo, then? I'll follow. Okay, let me get into Silas, then. You're watching the women's singles final at the Lipton Championships. Betsy Nagelson, Pam Schreiber, Cliff Drysdale, watching Steffi Groff and Natalia Svereva. It's six games to four. Svereva won the first set. Groff is leading in the second four games to one. This is Svereva serving. Love 15. Tonight here on ABC, Susan Lucci stars in the ABC Saturday Night movie, The Bride in Black followed by an all-new episode of The Commish, tonight on ABC. Fifteen all. Um, I get asked this question a lot, and I know that you two get asked it more often than I do. What about Monica Sellis? When is she coming back? Well, you know, I, I mean, I don't think anybody really knows for sure. Um, obviously, the game misses her desperately. Um, certainly, Steffi Graf misses that rivalry. Someone to continue to challenge her. Um, you know, and despite the lack of rivalries, Steffi Graf, can, you know, her game continues to improve. Besides uh, Steffi being very healthy and, and very excited to play this year, I think also the reason why she's dominated the other players on the tour is because she hasn't had Monica to, to beat up on her the way she was beating up on her in 92 and 93. Uh, the last time Steffi lost a Grand Slam match was uh, the last time that Monica played a Grand Slam tournament, the Australian Open in 93. Do you think she's going to come back this year, Pam, do you? I hope she comes back. I think it, saying Nobody anything knows, more right? is exactly, okay. it's so speculative. I, th I think it's pretty safe to say that we miss her, the game misses her, the sport of, you know, certainly the, the, the sport desperately misses her because, you know, she, she had such a different style. I mean, nobody could hit as hard as she could as accurately in the game. And when when Celis and Graf played each other, I mean, that was some of the most exciting tennis you could see. One of the great matches of all time was a 7-6 in the third semifinals US Open, Capriati Celis. Well, yeah. Great one, that oh. Break point here for Graf. For a second break in the second set, she's leading 4-1. The question is really, nobody knows when Monica Sellis is going to come back. What's we're, this? We're going to see here the two-hander up the line. That's really Zvereva's favorite. But there's no way, even if you pick it, you're not <laughs> going to get that one. It's really an up-the-line angle, which I've never seen before. <laughs> she could achieve that because uh, she keeps her hands so close to her body, and she gets such, such great speed with the hands. Good 
point, really, from both players. Uh, and Natasha did a great job to make that stab volley, reflex volley. This is the one here. What a sitting duck. And this is what she does so well. I mean, that's why she's such a great doubles player. A good move from Steffi to come in. She hits a lob. She follows it in. That's, that's, that's a serve and volleyer's instinct. But the lob was the play because Steffi's looking into the sun up that far end. I don't know why Natasha chose to drive that ball. Great point for Graf again the other night. Betsy was uh, talking to Svereva and uh, said, Natalia, and she said, you can call me Natasha. <laughs> so just for your information, Natasha is the name that she likes and the name that her friends on tour call her. Break point. Second of this game for Graf. Ooh. There it is again, and she slowed the tempo down. She's had game points both in the previous game, service game, as Steffi Groff's. Here's that wonderful backhand. Can't really tell. You can't read it. When you're an opponent, you have no idea which way it's going. But now Steffi's taking her time tallying off. A, a forehand from Groff that she's really improved to. Nine out of ten of those forehands that she runs around, she'd take inside out. Now she's starting to take many more, uh, you know, down this line, more cross court. So now the opponent's got to worry about that one uh, as well as the one out wide. Break point. They have both broken once of four chances in Groff as case. And Three in Sparrows. Oh. Missed that one, so there is the second breaker serve for Steffi Graf. She leads five games to one and will serve for the set. Steffi Graf, how about whether she misses Celis and Capriati? Sure, I also want to, to be pushed a little bit further than I have maybe in the beginning of the year, but um, I think eventually it will happen. But Maybe uh, I'm missing a little bit of it, yeah. Do you miss Monica? I miss Monica, I miss Jennifer. I think there are a few players there that um, could push me even a little bit further to get better. And uh, yeah, I, I miss that. You two have been saying the tennis world <laughs> misses them both. Yeah, and these things go in cycles. I mean, obviously it's an extreme circumstance that we don't have Monica competing on the tour, but. In a couple of years, this whole thing could change, and there'll be a couple of more top tough players. Just like the way in American tennis on the men's side a couple of years ago, everyone was saying there's nobody, nobody, and now look. Uh, suddenly, just, I mean, three of the four semifinalists here, here were all from the USA. Very nearly four of four. Agassi <laughs> Courier. Sampras and could have been Jim Grab, except Pat Rafter from Australia snuck his nose in there. Take a look at those unforced errors. Graf in the first set was had so many. Now she's cut them way down. Yeah, she's really cleaned up her act in the second set. Thirty all. Pam, you make a really good point. I mean, Monica Sells was just you know. A, Phenom on the circuit, and she was her achievements were incredible. In three short years, she wins eight Grand Slams. You know, but yes, in time there, there's there's gonna be more great players that, that come along. I also happen to think that you're seeing one of the great women players of all time. I mean, Steffi Groff Absolutely. is not just <laughs> your average number one player. Even I think she is exceptional. Set point for her. Oh! 
Double fault. It would be remiss of me not to ask you if you think that after uh, Capriati graduates, will she be back this year? Again, trying to speculate. Uh, I, again, I hope so, but who knows? She's she's struggling with a few things. Question mark there too, then. Deuce. That was Graf's, I'm sorry, Pam, that was Graf's only double fault, and she happened to serve a double fault just like uh, Zvareva did on a, on a set point. Set number two. Set point number two. Oh. Oh. Deuce again. Well, this set at 5-1, I mean, the crowd's kind of been taken out of the action a bit, and it seems like a real runaway. But remember the 3-1 game after Graf broke, Zvereva had break points to get back, and then she had game points at 4-1. So the, the, the set's really been closer than 5-1. This great stadium can accommodate 14,000 people, 7,500 seats are permanent, 6,500 are temporary. It is jammed. Smart shot there. I think I think Natalia was looking for the slice to go cross court. Third set point for Graf. That is it. Graf has won the second set easily, six games to one. Third set as we continue our live coverage of the Lipton after this. Her first service game coming out right now is kind of big. Mm. If, if six, six, two, max. She looks, I can't tell whether she sort of just had a lull, I mean, physically, or whether she's, she could be tired, a little tired. I mean, like, she didn't really scramble too hard to yeah. get back to that backhand up the line. Yeah, she might have just kind of mentally what that ball at the Clicked set. off. Now we'll see yeah. if she clicks on. Yeah. How many, um, Leo, how many break points did Natasha have? I can't read this thing. In that, she had none at, wait, 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 two, two in that she, set. She had two. She has two chances to break, to break yeah. back at 4-1. At Sorry. Yes, both times at 3-1. At 3-1. Yes. She broke for 3-1. Groff did and served. Okay. And served. She and served on the even games. Right. So it was at 3-1, two break points. Mm -hmm. Vendela. Okay. <coughs> Boo. Yeah. This great stadium here at the Lipton Championships has done this championship proud. Make no mistake about it. The Grand Slams are one thing, but the Lipton Championships is the next best thing to the Grand Slams. Here, Steffi Graf and Natalia Sver Svereva how battling it out here in the third set. First game, one set all. It's the women's singles final.
And Natasha's lost five straight games. It was one all. She held her opening service game of the second set, and Groff's gone on a, on a real run. And this game is huge. If she's going to get back in this match, she's got to hold serve the opening game in the third. The games were close. I mean, she was in them. She was competitive. But, uh, you know, a few more errors crept in. And, and the big points, she, the important points, she wasn't able to win like she was in the first set. Missed it. 15.30. And also you get the feeling that Groff has really settled down. I mean, she's, you know, cut way down on the unforced errors now. She's saying, OK, I'm going to stay in this thing. I'm not going to make errors. And Pam, as you mentioned, I mean, it is hot today. And uh, Ms. Vareva could be feeling the heat. Heinz Guntar, who's been so, um, you know, helpful to the Groff game. In fact, she gives him so uh, all the credit for the variety in her game, for the improvement, for some of the things she's never done before, just showing her new strategies, drop shots coming in. This is the start of his third full year as the coach of Steffi Groff, and as you mentioned, Betsy, bringing in some new dimensions. Uh, Pavel Slazel was unable to get her to attack second serves or to come to net, and while it's not a major part of her game now, she is more comfortable. Great well, points yeah. for Groff. A little trouble in this opening service games for Zareva. <gasps> oh, late call. Players hate late calls. <laughs> you yeah. just, you, you know, you think the point's alive and you're ready to hit that first volley and then the, you hear a fault. It's like even Steffi Groff hated that one. Second serve break point. Groff leads one game to love in the third now. We got a tired puppy on our hands. <laughs> Jeez, there's nobody stuff. more, I tell you, there's nobody more physically demanding mm -hmm. to hang into points with, do anything yeah. with, than Stephanie. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, you have to be so violent to cover her shots. What's been her previous longest singles match? I think it's like this year. No, in this tournament. Well, 50. It's to be Davenport. It was a, oh, that, was, that was an hour something, yeah. 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 No, I just want to sit and watch this great match, Brian, and, 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 and see how, yeah, and, and see how right you all are in your predictions, as is always the case, and just be astounded, you know, by your insights into the sport. Graf serving, second game, third set. She leads one game to love. Pam, you were saying at the break just how tough it is to stay with Steffi Graf and to run all of her shots down. Well, Physically. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's a very violent effort as an opponent of Steffi Groff's that you have to put forth, and you have to do it in order to win a match. Obviously, you have to play two great sets. Zareva played one, and so far she's having trouble getting into, getting into any winning position. Steffi doesn't leave you alone on the court. You're always having to move and move quickly to get to her balls. Zvereva has to 
has to do is she has to gamble some. I mean, on some of these serves, that was a 74-mile-an-hour second serve, and she just really got the ball in play. Betsy, she's got to gamble mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, she, she's got to really keep, you know, keep attacking. I mean, that's what she was doing in the first set. She was very aggressive. She was really going for shots early, early on, trying to be aggressive. No, but the thing is, she was willing to stay in point. I mean, when Graf had to hit, you know, take a, a swing at the ball three times or more, Zareva was winning 27 of the, you know, out of 50 of those points. But when Graf only had to hit two shots or less in a point, you know, Graf was in total control. Game point, Graf. And Graf was going to serve volley on that point, which she often likes to do when she's up 40 love. I'd like to see her do it at 40-30 uh, or 30-40 one time. to stay in a point with Steffi Graf. I mean, let's face it. I mean, you've got to be so fast. You've got to be so fit because you have to work so hard. Two games to love Graf. It is a beautiful day for shots from the overhead blimp. And that's the Goodyear blimp stars and stripes. It's 192 feet long, if you're interested, based in Pompano Beach, Florida. And what a great day to be up there again is all I can say, because it's perfect weather for flying, swimming, or tennis. Nice. Could not have been hit cleaner or sweeter, and it's love 15. Zvareva did a great job in that point to stay in it with this overhead that's coming up now. Steffi Graf hits a topspin backhand lob, which you very seldom see. Zvareva just barely gets to it, but the line's open. And she's a little bit tired about this time, having lost seven games in a row. So when you're tired like this, you want short points. You want to serve volley some more. You want to take the gamble and come to net as much as possible. It is a sensational stadium that houses the USTA player development program. You, they have a tremendous workout room here. They've got a, a wonderful press area. The players love it because you can eat in the press in the players area and watch matches and take a look where it's located. One of the most beautiful spots in all of the world. Ibiscan, Florida. Fifteen all. In fact, it is a tennis stadium by which other tennis stadiums will be judged in the future. All the players certainly have raved about it. So have the press. Yeah, I mean, the facilities are just so nice here, so spacious. And the public. They're the most important of all. Thirty fifteen. Game point. Now, grass courts will be built in this complex. They're not done yet, but there are hard courts, there are clay courts, and of course, the stadium court is a hard court, and the majority of the courts are hard. Game point for Svereva, and she hasn't won a game in a while. But she wins that one. She's on the board in the third set. We'll be back with more from the Lipton Championship after this word from our local stations. Yeah, had to.
First point of the game. Graf wins it. 15 love Graf. Two games to one Graf. One set apiece in this final of the Lipton Championships. We're live at the Tennis Center at Crandon Park on Keepers Game. Thirty left. Prize money for this event: 150,000 to the win winner and 50 tour points. These are the points that get you into the year-end championship. Runner-up: 75,000. Not on equal terms of the men, which is a little bone of contention that we have, but soon to be corrected in the future, we think. Game point grow. Holds on and it's three games to one. Sorry, Bitsy. And this is also what they're playing for. Some nice hardware. Isn't it beautiful? It, it, an entirely different third set scenario. Groff has certainly picked her game up. And Zvareva is certainly tired. She's had to work awfully hard to get to this position. They've been out here just over an hour and a half. It's a very hot day, very humid. She's had to work very hard. You know, not only to win the first set, but you know, even the second set, even though the score was very one-sided, it was still, you know, fairly competitive. She was in there with some chances. Martina Navratilova, uh, three times actually won three tournaments in three consecutive weeks. Nobody's done it since then. Steffi Groff is trying to do that today, and she leads three games to one in the third set. It was she that ushered out the era of Everett Nevertilova. And then Gabriela Sabatini took the scene, and it looked like it was going to be Groff and Sabatini, but Sabatini never really challenged her. Then along came Monica Sellis, and it was a whole different story. I think Steffi Groff would just as soon not have seen Monica Sellis, and then she was stabbed in the spring of last year and has not played since then. And Graf has dominated since that time. Love 30. Well, Steffi Groff's played 142 three-set matches in her life, having lost only 35 of those. She's lost 82 matches total in her lifetime. One only 683. It's, it's, it's <laughs> some scary and impressive numbers Steffi Graf has got under her belt. I mean, she's only lost to 13 players uh, since uh, 1985. 39 matches only she's lost. Great points for Graf. Who has the best chance of challenging Steffi Graf on the women's tour if uh, if Sellers does not come back? Kamiko Date, has she got a chance? How about Lindsay Davenport? Well, uh, Date Chanda doesn't Rubin? have a big enough shot. Davenport, though, she's got the power. She can, if she gets in a little better shape and, and learns to play the big points just a tad better, she's improving every month on the tour. They're 17 years old, semi finalist here. Break point Graf. The second break for Graf. She has really dominated this match since the beginning of the second set. It's four games to one. 
like it was in the first set, what does she do to try and get it back on track? Um, could she sense that Natasha's, I don't know whether, could she sense that she was tired or, or did she, did Steffi pick up her game and Natasha, you know, Natasha's clearly gone. Do you her talk a little bit about looking into the future? Keep more there. That's all. A Grand Slam? I mean, I, yeah. I, they I'm haven't gonna, talked I'm Grand gonna, Slam. I'm going to get into that a little bit. I mean, Brian, she you hates... you want me to go down or you want me to stay here? Uh-oh. to one Groff leads the crowd are whistling because they don't like a call in that last point but that's not going to help Natalia Svereva any and there's Donna Ring the chair umpire but uh, the point if it had been called long it would have given Zvereva love 30 and at least a little window to break and possibly get back in the match and put a little pressure. She's got the big shots to do this. Her forehand can be a very big weapon, and we haven't seen it in almost two sets. 15-30. Oh. When you get a little tired on the court and you're facing Steffi Groff and the serve comes down firmly, Sometimes it is hard to control it. I look at that last floaty return and I just feel like her whole body is just tired. Made the point. It takes a lot out of you to play against Graf. So that two-hander that she hits flat down the line, Pam, and uh, I'm talking about Svereva now. And it's perfect against Steffi because Steffi's always looking that people are going to go to her backhand all the time, so she often hops over to her left. And now it's a break point. Her first break point of this third set. And there it is. They're down to the point, except it was a forehand that Svereva hit, but that's exactly right, Cliff. It was Groff would have hit the serve and would have been looking for a backhand. So Spereva has not given up yet. Four games to two Groff leads now. Watch this again. And see if you can see Steffi after the serve. See if she doesn't look up. See how her weight is really leaning to her left. And she also stands a fair bit over when she serves into that ad court. Sports begins coverage of golf's first major of the year, the LPGA's best gathering in Palm Springs to honor a special friend from California. It's the Nabisco Dinah Shure next Saturday here on ABC Sports. Well, and after almost two sets of uh, taking 
a little easy. The crowd's suddenly gotten back into this match. It's 15 love. It's brave if she holds serve. She's back in the set. Bold oh. long draft doesn't like that call. And we're not getting any overrule from behind the ring in the chair, and it's 30 love. that out wide and very few players can reach this far wide look at this extension and how she whips her racket face around I mean if her racket face had kept going it would have hit her in the face <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the best way for the little equality on the tours if Groff starts beating up on beating herself <laughs> we don't want that to happen though Forty fifteen Pam women's tennis has lost enough players to, <laughs> to lose Steffi Graf as well with Monica Sellis out and Capriati finishing up at school. Neither one of them indicating for sure when they're coming back. And of course we have one more season of singles from one of the greats of all time Martina, Martina Navratilova. Yeah. Called a fault. Crowd did not realize it. He has a second serve. And the scoreboard's already registered. 4-3. No. Out of the corner of her eye, she could see as she was making the swing into that, that Steffi Graf had decided to make the move to cover the forehand cross court, which is exactly what uh, what she did. So take a look at this right here. Now, you have a look at her. Now watch this. She sees out of the corner of her eye that Graf has already started to make her move. And that's why she pulled that ball down. Didn't concentrate. A little bit of bad luck as the net cord may have messed up Zvareva's volley there. So we go from having game points for 4-3 to back to deuce. It's always a dilemma now whether or not to go for the big serve and risk missing it or just play a safe first serve and not have to hit a second. job to stay in that point she hit the forehand coming up right now very hard actually from the run she really hit that but Steffi takes it off really she hits it so late it's unbelievable that she can really control that as well as she does kind of shot that she hits um, if she hits it you got to say well played not much you can do about that it was almost a half volley from the baseline that she hit for a clean winner deuce It's a game point for Groff to take a 5-2 lead, and she's had this window of opportunity to get back into this match. She did a great job after losing so many games in a row to get three points to 4-3, and now it's going the other way. Great point, Groff. just a little too soon and Groff holds on she has a 5-2 lead now in the third set she's very much in control this is the final of the Lipton could have been interesting 
interesting, actually. 4-3. She's too tired to win it, but you can get kind of loose and relaxed when you're a little oh. tired. <laughs> a little unlucky in that game. Yeah, the neck cord, it, yeah. Uh, that was the big one. Stadium shot if uh, you got the time, Brian. No, we won't do it. Coming back. Wins it. Eight. This would make it 28. This year, but not in a row, including championships. Okay. You're watching the Lipton Championships. Graf and Svereva, five games to two. Graf leads it. This is Graf. Serving for the match, it's 15 love drop, now 30 love drop. And that approach shot's not carrying the same weight or location that it did in the first set when that play was so useful. You gotta try and get deep into that backhand corner. Two points from the match for Graf now. Match points for Steffi Graf. About to win her 28th straight match of this year. 32 if you go back to the Virginia Slims Championships, the last event of 93. She served in Mali. It was 40 love. I gotta remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Still set and match point and championship point for Graf. Steffi Graf is the winner of the Lipton for this year. Natalia Sverva gave her a very, very good fight in the first set, especially after that, Pam Schreiber, it was all Steffi Graf. It was a combination of maybe not quite good enough conditioning. You've got to be so strong to stay with Steffi Graf to win the match. But maybe a little bit of a barrier down. The rest of the players have seen her come close to losing sets. Now she lost this one. Maybe she'll lose some matches in the future. <laughs> Graf is the winner. She has won this match in three sets. That is 28 straight matches. It is 32 straight matches if you count uh, the end of last year as well. So this great stadium at the Lipton Championships has seen a tremendous women's singles final, at least in the first set, with Svereva winning the first set. Valvoline Australian Indy Car Grand Prix tomorrow here on ABC. Followed by the Lipton Championships, it'll be the men's final, and you'll see Andre Agassi take on the top player in the world, Pete Sampras, both of them from the USA. That's at 4 o'clock Eastern time. For Betsy Nagelson and Pam Shriver, I'm Cliff Drysdale. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this afternoon's tennis, and I know that you'll be with us tomorrow at 4 p.m. to watch the men's singles final for a final time for today. Goodbye from Key Biscayne.
vraiment euh, énorme. Alors qu'elle n'a que 24 ans, qu'elle possède déjà son palmarès 15 tournois du Grand Chelem, qu'elle sera bien évidemment favorite à Roland Garros, à Wimbledon et à Flushing Meadow. On attend bien sûr le retour de Monica Seles. Monica Seles, aujourd'hui citoyenne américaine depuis maintenant trois jours, qui est passée devant les autorités de Miami et qui a reçu la citoyenneté américaine. Par contre, de tennis, elle n'en parle pas, Monica Seles. Vraisemblablement, psychologiquement, pas tout à fait rétablie, alors que physiquement, tout va pour le mieux. Et dans un nouveau t-shirt, ce qui grave, pas maintenant. Ladies and gentlemen, we direct your attention now to the stadium court with tournament director Butch Buckholz. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to introduce to you some people that make this tournament work. Representing the Women's Tennis Association, Mr. Jerry Smith. And a gentleman that's been with us for 10 years, our tournament referee and the referee of Wimbledon, Mr. Alan Mills. And a gentleman who uh, is our tournament director, and there are only four other tournament directors in the world that do anything like this, and there's the four Grand Slams, my brother, Cliff Buckholz. Our presenting sponsor, the president and CEO of Rado Swiss Watches, Mr. Roland Strola. And the president of Lipton Sports Inc., Mr. Jerry Boyx. And the president and the CEO of the Thomas J. Lipton Company, Mr. Blaine Hess. Our finalists, would she come forward? Natasha Zirova. Thank you so much. I appreciate it very much. Thanks a lot. Um, I'd like to say congratulations to, to Steffi. She played a very good match. I thought I did good win in the first set. <laughs> um, great thanks to our tournament directors, um, Butch and Claire Buckholz, uh, Hugo Boss, Lipton, <laughs> My friends over there, uh, Julie, Juan, Jeej, my partner. And um, thanks so much to um, Pires, Linesman, uh, Ball Kids, um, everybody. I, I hope I didn't miss everybody. <laughs> and um, I've, I've, I've loved to play here um, for about my fifth year or something. And uh, it's been a great pleasure. Thank you so much. And our women's champion, Steffi Groff. Congratulate 
Natalia for a great tournament. I wonder what would happen if she would have won. <laughs> 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 but um, I had again a great time. And I also want to thank Bush and Cliff for putting a great tournament. And I have to say, I've been around a lot of tournaments, a lot of stadiums, but I think you have the nicest days there around. <laughs> I didn't just say because I won. <laughs> and I also want to thank the sponsors, Slipton and Rado and Hugo Boss, and uh, everybody who was involved in the tournament, all the volunteers, a big thank you to all of you. All the guys at Wallet Parking, <laughs> and uh, ball guys and all the umpires. Thank you, and I'll see you next year. <laughs> Uh, subscribe to the WTA YouTube channel. It's the best, obviously, because I'm holding a plaque.